Along the Sicilian coastline, there stands a legendary car factory. The famous Fiat 500 and Panda were assembled in this factory. After being abandoned for over a decade, we are heading inside for one final look at this incredible piece of automotive history left abandoned. We'll start our adventure on the edge of the complex, at the old filtration plant. During exploration, I had little information regarding the security or what remained in this place. So I had to sneak around. Not much later, I was inside the plant. It was already clear that this part was in the near time capsule like state. So let's head over to the main highlights, the massive assembly halls. But first, the history itself. The Italian car industry originally centralized around the north of Italy, especially Turing and Milan, which were true industrial hotspots for brands such as Fiat, Lancia and Alfa Romeo. To create more economic opportunity in the south of Italy, these companies were pushed by the government to build factories in South Italy as well. In the late 60s, Fiat Termini Emerese was born on the island of Sicily. At the time of opening, the factory was a state-of-the-art facility and regarded as one of the most modern in the world. The first cars produced here were the famous Fiat 500. Crossing the massive open space where cars were once stored, we slowly came closer to the halls. I had to look for possible cameras due to active security residing at the front gate of the facility, possibly checking for intruders. Finally, we got inside the old factory. Once inside, production lines still seem to be mostly intact. Besides this, it was noticeable that vehicles were still frequently driving within the big hall, based on the clear tracks on the floor. Slowly, I sneaked to the first production line, which seemed to be still in a time capsule-like state. I'm not exactly sure about this area's role in the production, but it was clear that this side of the hall was where cars were nearly finished. Located parallel is a part a bit more recognizable. These yellow colored racks carry the vehicles to give access to the underside of the car. It's in fact incredibly rare for abandoned car factories to have this much stuff inside of them. Most of the time these machines are the first to go when closed down. After 5 short years of producing the 500, it was finally phased out and followed up by its replacement, the Fiat 126. At this time during the 70s the factory was eventually expanded to its current form. When the 1980s started, the 126 was eventually replaced by the highly popular Fiat Panda. Times look bright, both for Fiat and the workers. We arrived at the smaller workshops, which were in the past quite automated, as you can see. In fact, it looked quite modern.
a bit further on, it really became clear that the whole factory was still intact, including multiple workshops, production lines and offices. The only downside was that this area was very close to the security offices. So I decided to first check out the offices before heading to the riskier parts of the factory. In the first office block, rows of old prizes were left behind. These prizes were sports prizes, all related to Fiat. In fact, back in the day, Fiat was known to be quite a social company, prioritizing the workers' well-being to quite a high level. This meant that Fiat organized sports competitions, for example, but also accompanied the factories with loads of natural lighting, outside terraces for the workers and many other luxuries. Those times are long gone today. In the 90s, production shifted to the Punto, which became an equally bestseller as the Panda. Car production became a lot more competitive, which meant that the factories around Europe had to become larger and more efficient. This factory was quite small and therefore less efficient. In 2005, the Punto was followed up by the Lancia Y. And this car was in fact the last car produced here. During production, rumors of closure already became louder and louder. In 2011, the factory closed down, laying off a staggering 2200 employees. Hope wasn't completely lost, as other companies were, in fact, interested in the still relatively modern factory. The yellow clamps we looked at a moment ago were a whole track, even going into the air. Let's take a closer look at this part. Walking over the catwalks, the size of the system became clear. Very loud, multiple bangs could be heard all of a sudden. So it was time to hide. Luckily, I was raised from the ground, making it a lot less obvious. The banks got closer and closer, and it kind of sounded like they were checking doors. After waiting, it was time to make the escape. After the closure, the factory switched hands multiple times, but it eventually was sold to Bluetech. 
Bluetech was meant to produce and design electric cars. In 2019, after an investigation, the financial police arrested the top of the company. It seemed that the company hadn't done anything besides replacing some signs on the buildings. 16 million euros worth of subsidies were transferred to private accounts, which meant that large-scale fraud was committed. After this, the last hope was gone for the workers and the future of the factory. The factory was left abandoned, while the fraudsters bought a mega villa in the north of Italy. Today the factory has been sold once again, but this time it's getting finally stripped and demolished. Meaning the definitive end of car production on the island of Sicily.